Hey guys, welcome back for another very exciting tutorial here at the PhotoshopTrainingChannel.com. My name is Jesus Ramirez. You can find me on Twitter at JR from PTC. In this tutorial, we're going to be creating this stylized motivational poster. The style that we're going for is this grungy dark look, which has been pretty popular lately. But before we go any further, let me introduce you to the motto we're going to use for this tutorial. This is Lewis House from LewisHouse.com. Lewis is actually doing some amazing things right now in his business and in his personal life. Lewis is a former football player turned entrepreneur who many people know for his success with utilizing LinkedIn to grow his business from scratch. He's also published two books about LinkedIn. Lewis is also part of the Olympic handball team and is hoping to make it to the 2016 Olympics, which is pretty cool. He also has a brand new podcast, which features some amazing guests, including two of my all-time favorite authors, Tim Ferriss, author of The 4-Hour Workweek, and Robert Greene, author of The 48 Laws of Power, and most recently, Mastery, which is a book I highly recommend. Actually, that's sort of how I met Lewis. I heard him on a podcast one day, and after the podcast, I sent him an email, and we started talking. And he saw what I was doing with PTC, so he was kind enough to share with me some photos we could use for this tutorial. So thank you, Lewis, if you're listening, for allowing us to use your image. So once you're done watching this tutorial, head over to Lewis's website and let him know that you found him through this tutorial. And check out his stuff. He's got some things I'm sure you'll enjoy. Anyway, back to the tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to use four images and we're going to composite them together and apply some adjustment layers to give them the grungy look we're going for. And as always, we're going to be working non-destructively, so we'll convert all of our images into smart objects. Anyway guys, let's get started. We're going to start out by using this document here, which is 1980 by 1080 pixels. And we have these three files here that I've placed within this document. So I have the background, an image of Lewis, and a rock. And all I did is I went to File, Place, and selected the images. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that with the sky just so you can see how that works. And then you place the image. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the images become smart objects when we bring them in. And you know they're smart objects because in the thumbnail here you have in the right bottom corner this icon indicating that the layer is a smart object. So we're going to start out with this image of Lewis and I'm going to double click on the thumbnail here to open up the smart object. Just press OK. And within this image I've already gone ahead and created a layer mask that removes the background from Lewis's image. And I don't want to take the time to show you how I did that because I've done it in other tutorials and I don't want to waste the time on this one. And all I basically did is I selected the quick selection tool and I created a selection around Lewis and then created a mask and then I clicked on mask edge to refine the edge around him. So I'm going to press control S to save that. So when I come back into, into my composition, the background has been removed. So we're going to be working from here. And as I said before, we have the rock and the sky and the background, but we're going to shut the visibility of those off so we can just work on Lewis's image for now. So the first step is to stylize the image of Lewis in that grungy, dark effect that we're going for. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an adjustment layer that's going to darken up the highlights a little bit and another adjustment layer that's going to darken up the shadows of this image. And I need to find a way that I can select the shadows and the highlights. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to go into the channels panel and go through our channels and see which of those channels has more contrast between lights and darks. So in this case, the blues channel has the most contrast. The darks are obviously much darker than the lights. Um, something like red, everything's sort of grayed out. Um, you only really see the darks back here, so this wouldn't work as well. So I'm going to choose the blue channel. Then I'm going to press Control, click, and that's Command click on the Mac to make a selection out of that channel. Then I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back into my Layers panel. I'm going to click on the new Adjustment Layer icon and click on Curves. And this is going to create a Curves adjustment layer that's only going to target the light pixels in this layer. If I bring this down, you'll see how 
it affects the layer. It's only affecting the light pixels. So I don't want to go that far. I just want to darken them up just a little bit, maybe something like that. So you'll see the difference, just a slight darkening of the light pixels. Now I'm going to rename this layer Highlights. Now I want to do the same thing, but I want to target the dark pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control J to duplicate that layer. I'm going to rename the layer into Shadows. I'm going to click on the Layer Mask icon. And I'm going to click on this Invert button to invert the pixels so you see the difference between the, the two layer masks here. So now I'm only targeting the dark pixels. So if I click on the curves icon here or the adjustment layer icon you'll see that now if I make any changes it only affects the dark pixels so I want to create a little bit more contrast between that so I'm just gonna create a curve that looks something like this okay so as you can see this is our before and this is our after so we're already getting that grungy dark look already and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create more detail and definition in the face, the arms, and other areas by using a burn and dodge technique. I'm sure that you've seen me use burning and dodging before, and what you probably saw me do in the past is uh, create a new layer, fill that layer with 50% gray, set it to soft light, and then use the burn tool to create shadows and the dodge tool to create highlights. So this is the before and this is the after. Well instead of showing you something that I've shown you in the past, I'm going to show you something a little bit more advanced. That way you learn something new and I think you're really going to like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new curves adjustment layer and we're going to name this curve burn. And we're going to set this to luminosity but let me show you why first. If I click and drag on this curve to an extreme, you'll see that it blows out the saturation of the colors. You'll see it in, you'll see it in the yellow here, a little orange in the neck. We don't really want that to happen and that also happens if we go to the dark. So you can't really see it too well on this image but you can kind of see the red and a little bit of yellow there. So that's not good for us. So what we want to do instead is change the blending mode to luminosity so it only makes the colors lighter and it doesn't blow them out. For this curve, we're going to bring the colors down so we can make this image as dark as we would want it. So this is probably the darkest this image would go. So that's where I'm going to leave my curve. Then I'm going to click on that layer mask thumbnail and I'm going to press Control i to invert. That's the same thing as clicking the invert button here. I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to press Control j and I'm going to rename to duplicate the layer and I'm going to rename this adjustment layer dodge. I'm going to disable the layer mask so we can see what's going on and I'm going to lighten this image as well and again I don't want to go too high and I don't want to blow out this image so drag this up to the lightest you would want this image to be so the lightest I would ever want it to be maybe is something like that so that's where we'll leave it so this is our curve here and I'm going to enable the layer mask to hide that. Now we're going to click on the burn layer mask icon. We're going to set our foreground color to white. We're going to click on the brush tool. We're going to set the opacity to 20% and the flow to 25%. Then I can start painting in some details here like so. And you might not be able to see what's going on just yet but just trust me on this. This is actually a much better, much better way of doing it. Okay, now we're going to click on the Dodge Layer Mask icon and we're going to add some highlights. Okay, so then if we shut these off, you'll see the before and the after. So I'll do one at a time so you can see. You see how much more shape it gives to the face. And if you've done too much, you can always bring the opacity down or bring it up. 
And also, you can take advantage of the curves that you created. So you can click and drag this down to make those darker, lighter, if you wanted to for whatever reason. It just gives you so much more control than just using a 50% gray layer set to soft light. So this is just a more advanced way of creating dodging and burning. It takes a little bit longer to set up, but it gives you a whole lot more control. So I think I'll leave this somewhere around here. Okay, now I'm going to select all the layers that we've been working on. Press Control G, Command G on the Mac to put that into a group. And I'm going to rename this group Lewis. Okay, now we're going to be working with the background. So I'm going to turn that layer on. And I'm going to press Control T, Command T on the Mac to act as a transform tool. And I'm just going to increase the size. I'm going to scale this up a little bit and place this where I want this to go. Maybe somewhere around here, perhaps. Then I'm going to press Enter. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to match this dark, grungy look with this background image here. But what I'm going to do first is blur the image a little bit since it's a little too sharp, sharper than my foreground, and I don't want that. So I'm going to click on the background layer, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and about 1.1 is fine, so I'm going to press OK. And it's just a little bit blurrier now. If I change my mind, I can always double click on the adjustment blur and change that if I want to. This is another reason why I like working with smart objects. Then I'm going to add a black and white adjustment layer. And this is going to desaturate the image. So I'm going to bring the opacity down to somewhere around 75%. So I can still get some color, but the image is pretty saturated, as you can see. And the reason I like using the black and white adjustment layer is because I can change some of these tones. I can change some of the colors to affect the image differently. It gives you a whole lot more control. So I'm going to press Control-Z to undo these changes so I can go back to the beginning. Oops, I went a step too far. I'll just create it again and set that to 75%. Okay, and I'm going to make this into a clipping mask by holding Alt, that's Option on the Mac, and clicking in between the two layers. So this only affects the layer that's right below it, in this case the background, and you know it's a clipping mask because you see the little down pointing arrow to the left of the adjustment layer icon. I'm going to create a curves adjustment layer just to create more contrast within the image. So maybe something like that I think would work. And also, I'm also going to uh, create a clipping mask here. There's nothing else in between these layers that would affect, but I just like doing it just in case I change my mind and I put something under it, it doesn't affect it. It's just a good habit to have. Now, this is still a little too bright, so I'm going to use a, a, a layer with black to darken up the background here but I don't want it to affect the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the lasso tool and I'm just going to trace around the mountains here. And as you can see I'm not being so perfect and I just made that uh, weird turn there but that's okay. I'm just going to select everything and if I need to go back and uh, make some changes I can always hold shift and fix the mistakes I had. And I'm not going to worry about these cactuses for now and I'm just going to create a new layer and click on a layer mask icon to create a layer mask. Now in this new layer I created, I'm going to fill it with black by holding Alt and Backspace. That's Option Backspace on the Mac. And I'm going to set this to 5% opacity. So it darkens it up a bit. And you know what? It, I might need a little more than that. Let's make it, let's make it 25%. Yeah, that's much better. So as you can see, it darkens that up. It doesn't make any changes to the sky. And by the way, this edge is still a little too hard. So I'm going to click on the layer mask icon, click on mask edge, and I'm just going to feather that. You know, something like 4.7 or 5 pixels should be OK. And then just press OK. And I'm going to select all the layers that I've been working with, press Control G. And I'm going to name this background. Now 
Now I'm going to work with the sky layer, so I'm going to turn that layer on. I'm going to press Control T to transform, press OK. And oops, sorry about that, I was... I clicked on the wrong layer here. Click on the sky layer, press Control T, move that up, and I'm going to scale that a little bit. Maybe move it up a little bit more. Maybe something like that and we can change this of course later if we want to. Then I'm going to change the blending mode to multiply. I'm going to control click on the mask of this darkening layer. I'm just going to call this layer darker because it's going to make everything below it darker. I'm going to click control click on that layer mask icon that's command click on the Mac and it's going to make a selection out of that. I'm going to click on the sky layer and add a layer mask. Then I'm going to press Control i to invert that selection so it keeps the sky and it hides everything that's within the mountain, like so. Okay, and things are looking pretty good, but this image is a little too saturated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new black and white adjustment layer, and I'm going to set this to 60%, like so. And I'm going to make this into a clipping mask. I'm going to hold Alt in between the layers and click. And I'm going to put these two in a group, press Control G, Command G in the Mac, and I'm going to call it Sky. And I'm going to bring that down above the background folder. And while we're at it, I'm going to just put those two in one group, and I'm just going to call that Background. Yeah, I know, it's got the same name as the folder inside of it, but I think that's okay. So this holds the background, this holds the image, and, these, and this folder holds both. And this is the image of Lewis right here. And you know what? I did not add clipping mask to these curve layers. So as you can see, it's affecting the background. And I don't want that to happen. I just want these layers to affect the Lewis layer. So I'm just going to create clipping mask on all these guys here. So now the Lewis folder does not affect the background. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work with this rock. And we're going to replace this medicine ball Lewis is holding with this rock. So it looks like he's carrying this rock. So I'm going to press Control T to transform. I'm going to move that into position. And I'm going to scale that down just a little bit. Maybe not too much. Maybe something like, like that. Maybe bring this in a bit more. Try not to make the, the rock too distorted. Maybe something like that. Then I'm going to right click on the image there and select Warp so I can change the shape of this rock and make it fit as if Lewis were carrying it. So something like this. And you see this little edge here? It's sort of a crack on the rock and then there's a little divot there. I kind of want to place that in his finger so it looks like it'll be a good place where he would hold it from if he were really holding it. So maybe maybe somewhere around there. So he's carrying this big huge rock. And something like that looks like it'll work. I'm going to press enter. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a layer mask. I'm going to fill it with black. So I'm going to press Control Backspace, that's to fill with the background color, which is black. That's Command Backspace on the Mac. And now I can start painting with white. And by the way, I'm going to change my opacity to 100%, my flow to 100%, and I can just start painting with, with white. And I'm going to select a brush that's got a hard edge. And I'm not really worried about the right side of the image that much. I'm mostly concerned about this side. So the reason I created a layer mask is so I could paint in and not go over his fingers. So I'm going to zoom in by holding Alt and using the mouse wheel to zoom in. And Actually, at this point, I do want to use the soft brush, so I'm going to change brushes here. And 
and I'm just going to paint that in as best as I can. Like so. Okay, I think that's I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It looks like it's actually came in that rock. What I'm gonna do now is create a new layer and I'm gonna paint with black using a soft brush to just create better shadows around his fingers. And obviously I'm painting over his hand and that's okay for now. Something like so. Maybe there'll be a bigger shadow here, and actually, you know what, I didn't like that as much. Maybe something like that. Maybe something like this. And I'm going to click, control click on this rock layer mask that I cre created, and apply it to the new, sh I'm going to call this layer shadow, to this new shadow layer. And as you can see, it adds those shadows, and obviously that's a bit too dark, so I'm going to bring that down maybe 60% or so. Next I'm going to create a shadow that covers the entire rock so I'm going to go into my adjustment layers and create a gradient overlay adjustment layer. I'm going to press OK for now but as you can see this adjustment layer is affecting the entire image and I don't want this. I'm going to drag that down and I'm going to place it on top of the rock layer and make it into a clipping mask so it only affects the rock here. So I'm going to double click on this icon here to bring this gradient back and I can sort of place this back in here. You know what? I'm noticing that I didn't mask everything correctly so I'm going to fix that as soon as I'm done applying this gradient fill. And by the way, notice that I'm clicking and dragging this so I'm just going to place this somewhere around here just make the bottom part of the rock a little bit darker. Press OK. I'm going to come back into this layer mask and I'm going to paint with white so I can what I'm going to do what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add one more adjustment layer this time it's going to be a curves adjustment layer I'm also going to create a clipping mask out of that and I'm just going to create a little more contrast within the rock so maybe something like that if it's too strong, you can always bring the opacity down, but it's okay at 100% for me. And I'm going to select all the layers I've been working with and put them into its own group, and I'm going to call this group Rock. So now we have our composition almost completed. What we need to do now is unify everything into one color scheme. So as you can see, things are looking okay, but you know, you can kind of tell that this and this don't really belong just because of the colors. There's a lot of blue here, a lot of orange here. This doesn't have any orange or blue, it's sort of grayish. Um, so things are, are looking okay, but they're not matching in terms of color. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a new photo filter. And I'm just going to leave it at a warming filter and at the default density settings of 25%. That works for me. Then I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And this time it's going to be a gradient adjustment layer and I'm gonna click on radial and you guessed that we're gonna create a vignette and we're gonna set this to about 390 or so 387 should work okay actually uh, 397 percent click on reverse press OK and we're gonna change the blending mode to soft light so as you can see the difference here soft light just sort of darkens, darkens the edges without really turning them into black so I really like that effect there and we're going to add one more black and white adjustment layer to sort of get rid of some of the color there. So we're just going to set this to 25%. So that's the before and that's the after. So as you can see, you can still see color, but it's still pretty muted, which is an effect that I like. And I'm going to add one more curves adjustment layer to create more contrast within this image. And I'm creating an S-curve, as you can see. So there it is, the before and after. I'm going to select the top layer, the bottom layer, press Control g and I'm just going to call this Final Adjustments. So we have our final adjustments here. Rock, Lewis, 
in the background. And all we need to do now is add some text. And that's very simple. You just click on your text tool and you create a text box and just add whatever text you would like in that text box. I'm not going to make anything special. I'm just going to use white letters and, and I'm going to press control V since I already have the text I want to use and my text is not fitting correctly. So I'm just going to increase the size of this text box. And this is what the text I brought in says, the difference between the impossible and the possible lies in a man's determination by Tommy Lasorda, it's a former baseball player. And once I have places into position, I can click and drag the handles here to place my text box better if I want to. So let's try that. See, I can move it up, I can move it down. And I can also press Control Enter to accept the text box. Press V on the keyboard and I can move that around as well. So I can put that I can put that there if I want to. Now I'm gonna double click on the text layer and I'm gonna add an outer glow. And I'm gonna set that outer glow to black, set the blending mode to multiply, press OK. And now if I zoom in you'll see that there's sort of a, an outline in that glow and you know what I'm gonna double click on that again and I'm just gonna increase the size of it just a little bit more and maybe you bring the opacity down just a little bit maybe 50% I'm gonna press OK I'm gonna zoom out and also in case you're wondering the font that I'm using for this text is Trajan Pro bold at 75 points and the Tommy Losarda name is at 35 points and the reason everything was formatted for me is I copied it off camera and when I pasted it at the font size that I was looking for and I did it that way just to save a little time and talking about saving time if you remember from the sample I showed you in the beginning there's a few more things we need to add to this composition to complete it but we're gonna cover those steps in another tutorial in part two of this tutorial we'll cover adding texture to his skin creating more sweat in Lewis's face. I'll also show you how to make his muscles just a little bit bigger, not that he needs it of course, and I'll show you how to stylize the image just a bit further to finish off the effect. And don't worry, you can actually check that tutorial out right now. Just go to my website, photoshoptrainingchannel.com. The part two of this tutorial will be on my subscriber only section. So if you're a subscriber to the Photoshop Training Channel newsletter, you can go there now and check it out. If you're not a subscriber, you can subscribe for free. There's no charge. Just go to my website, enter your email on the top right, and I'll immediately send you an email to the subscriber only section. And you'll also be emailed anytime I put up a new tutorial. So that's it for this tutorial. As always, I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to share this tutorial with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, or wherever you like to share your stuff. And don't forget to watch part two of this tutorial. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.